Hello and welcome to the second lesson in current electricity. Uh, learning goal today, uh, you can explain how electrons behave when in a direct current system. So by now, you should have gone through the analogy of how current electricity works. And if you haven't, then you need to be contacting me and saying uh, we need to do this because this helps kind of visualize. It's a crude representation of how it works, but it, it really gives you a good feel and allows for a lot easier tra uh, transition in uh, visualizing the process involved here. So we've gone through, I'm not going to waste my time going through that because I've already explained it, should have been done in class. What I want to do is I want to look at uh, the deep briefing. So what do we know about current now? Um, in the past, I'll give you the past answers from what people have found from the analogy, uh, that the electrons, people concluded that electrons maintain their order, which is kind of true. Uh, tough for us to actually identify, but it does make sense. So electrons maintain their order in the circuit. So uh, it's true for the analogy, whether it, it's completely accurate is uh, is perhaps not uh, not completely true. But for now, it's, it's a conclusion that was drawn. Another conclusion that dr is drawn is that current divides up pr proportionally. So it divides up, oops, divides up proportionally, proportionally. when faced with multiple resistors. So we know that the current divides and it does it proportionally. All right. Another point is that current always sums the same amount to the same total. So no matter where you are in the circuit, the total amount of current hasn't changed. All right. So if we add up our current for the multiple paths, it's always consistent uh, throughout the entire circuit. And two of the important ones, all electrons start with the same energy so when you go to the battery every electron starts with the exact same battery or same value sorry and all electrons return with no energy all right so we have the same energy and no energy. So in the past, in the years I've been teaching the course, this is kind of the the, the uh, responses that I've had uh, uh, summarizing what we found when we went through and did this analogy. Okay, Some of them we're going to find aren't completely accurate, but it gives you a feel when you're looking at this, you should be saying, yeah, I did see that in the analogy and so on and so forth. Okay, And we probably have done the debriefing already in class, um, but this is for people that uh, just again did it a while ago and again a bit of a review. So that brings us to two important laws. First one is Kirchhoff's current law. So his current law, and this is something that is important, it's going to be uh, come back on a quiz or a test, uh, the total amount of current into a junction point of a circuit equals the total current that flows out of the same junction. So keeping it simple, let's say on the first wire here, we have our total current. At this junction box, it then breaks or splits into three parts. At this junction box, we're going to have it return. This one's going to reach a junction box and split off. And then all these currents or all these wires are going to come back here. All right, so we have our I total at this point. So if I break this into sections, that's why I lined up my junction boxes. Current 1, current 2, current 3, current 4, 5, and 6. And then here is our total again. What do we know? I know that my total current is going to equal 
the sum of the currents in that first region, which is going to equal the current in the third region, oops, plus I5 plus I6. All right. So when you look at it in a cross section, like I've set up here, we know that the sum of the currents are going to be the same in that particular region. So this region, those three currents always sum up to the total. In this region, as we take a cross section, it's going to add up to your current total current. And that's what Kirchhoff discovered then. So the question below, what do we know about voltage? Well, we found two things out in the analogy. And we found that voltage is the difference in pretzels. Difference in pretzels between any two points. So when we are calculating our voltage, we're basically asking, how many pretzels do you have at point A? How many pretzels do you have at point B? So there is our voltage difference. And the second point was our total voltage never changed. And that's because we're governed by the battery. Got governed by the battery. So if the battery only provides us with 6 volts, then that's all we have to distribute through our various circuits or various resistors throughout the circuit. So we're governed by that battery, so our voltage is finite. You can't, if you're given one pretzel at the start of the analogy, you had to eat it all and that's all you ever got. So you had one pretzel to distribute throughout. So that leaves us to, or leads us to Kirchhoff's voltage law. And that is the total of all electrical potential decreases in any circuit it is equal to the uh, increases in the, in the loop. So, for example, here is our battery over here. I'll talk about diagrams here in a second. Okay, went through the resistor. He went over some more chairs. He went over more chairs. So here's your battery. If it's a 6-volt battery, then all your voltages had to add up to 6. You only had, you are given 6 pretzels. All right, six volts, we equated to pretzels. You had six pretzels, and you had to use all six pretzels. So that tells me that my voltage total, which is provided by the battery, has to add up to all the voltage drops within a circuit. Okay, you only have so many pretzels. Okay, so that gives us Kirchhoff's voltage law. So those two laws are very, very important for us, especially when we start doing the circuit analysis a little bit later on. So what do we know about resistance? So from the analogy, what do we know about resistance? Well, we know that we can, uh, it's, it's an energy transfer. All right, we are having some resistance uh, in the form of, for example, light bulbs. The electrons are slowed down, generate that heat, that glow, and creates light. And also, if we increase our resistance, we can slow down the current. and vice versa. So if we decrease resistance, we can speed the current up. So what we have then is we have two types of circuits. We have something called series and we have something called parallel. So in series, there's only one path. All right, there's only one path. So that makes, makes life a little bit easier because I've got voltage is going to be the sum of the voltages, current all the way through, there's only one path. So that's why I say one path, all the currents will be equal. What we get at the end of the day then is our total resistance is equal to the sum of all the resistors in the circuit. Oops, two, three, and so on and so forth. 
Okay. You know you have series. So if we're talking about Christmas lights, you know you you know you have series. If you pull a bulb, and they all go out. Very frustrating because you got to figure out what bulb blew. Oops, maybe I'll just stand that down. And they all go out. All right. So if you have a series, a, a light strand in series, what happens then? You pull out one bulb, all the lights go dead. Now, in parallel, parallel means that the pathways split. Okay. So for this one, there was only one pathway. All the current had to go through the one pathway back to the battery. In parallel, an example will look like this. So you had two, two choices, choice one, choice two. So in that case, we find that your total resistance is governed by this relationship. One over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. And I'll get into the math when we do some examples a little bit later on. But we call that the inverse, the sum of the inverses. Okay? And here, if you pull a bulb, the rest stay on. Much better lights to buy, because if you have one bulb below, the rest of them stay on. Okay, so there are the two formulas. You can add, you might as well add them to your formula sheet now. Um, and I'll get into some of the calculations very soon in a later lesson. Finally, I just want to talk about uh, circuits here, or drawing the circuits. Uh, I have a couple of common ones I'm going to draw the pictures for. There's many, many more out there. Um, and you're going to come across them if you do take some electrical courses at the next level. And I just had to pause it. My formatting was terrible. Hopefully the formatting on your sheet is a lot better, or it looks like this. So anyway, going through this quick, um, your cells. So a cell looks like this. One cell uh, represents one volt on a drawing. If I wanted a three volt battery, I would draw it like that. And the large bar always indicates the positive side and the negative side for us. Okay? So there's a cell. DC generator looks like, looks like this. If you have a DC generator inside your circuit, and an AC generator. It's going to look like that. So that's your AC and DC generators. Uh, I'm going to jump up here to a resistor. A resistor is a sharp squiggly line. And that could be anywhere from um, a, a heater to a light bulb. The lamp, we just do it as a loop. So if you see a loop in the circuit, you know you have a lamp with the motor. So you have an electric motor inside your uh, remote control car. It'll look like that. A coil, which we're going to do a little bit of work with a little bit later on. It's going to look like that. Back over here to the transformer. Uh, the transformer looks like this. It's two parallel bars with a coil coming downward. So transformer allows us to bring in high voltage from a power plant and step it down so it's something that we can uh, use inside our house. Now, electric meters goes together here. It's its own category. So these are devices that allow us to measure and moderate electricity. So the ammeter looks like this. Be an A inside there. A fuse, if you have the old system with the fuse boxes. The curve looks like that. Ground looks like this. It's kind of dissipating oops, into the ground there. Voltmeter, same as the ammeter, or similar to the ammeter. A switch, so if we have a physical switch in the system, this is what it would look like drawn open. And if we close the circuit, that's what a switch looks like. So those are some general drawing sketches. You need to be aware of them. Uh, you don't need to memorize them. I'm not going to have you draw a circuit on a plan, so it's just a matter of identifying what they are when they come up. All right. Any questions, you can ask me in class, and uh, what ifs and whatever else. So anyway, good luck with the homework.